Hello, welcome back to the Ball Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. But today we're going to be continuing our countdown of the top 100 ball games of all time voted on by me. This is number 80 down to 71. There's some fantastic ball games on this list. Just remember though, if your super fantastic ball game ain't on this list, then that's because we ain't played it, in it. Board games, 4K. Number 80 on this list is, it's another dexterity game, fuck me. This is Blocky Mountains, and in this game you will be constructing a course out of all these different shaped blocks or different obstacles and you will have these sticks with ropes attached to them this sounds really weird right but just bear with me a sec right and you'll be trying to move your explorer across the obstacle course trying to get to the finish or you might have to maybe push a bear along the obstacle course and you've also got a provisions pack that you might have to push as well this is a really underrated game i can't believe it more people haven't played Blocky Mountains. It has recently been reprinted by a mainstream publisher and you can get it on Amazon, I think, because this was really hard to get when we found out about this. But yeah, this is a absolutely fantastic dexterity game. It's up there. If you haven't played Blocky Mountains, then I implore you to go and seek out a copy. If you don't do it, then you're a twat. Number 79 is a game by one of our favourite designers, Paolo Mori. This is Libertalia. This game has a sort of a pirate themed game. There's 30 different characters in this game. And each time you play it, you can be drawing 10 different characters. So the game's going to be changing every time you play it, right? During each round, everyone will select a character. You'll play them on the table and then you'll do what they say in number order. And you'll be collecting booty. Not that type of booty but you'll be collecting booty. You'll be trying to get points by collecting as much stuff. There'll be a bit of take that. And it is really a fantastic little game. Paolo Mori's games generally are really, really simple. You know, like Augustus Dogs of War. The mechanics always tied to the theme nicely and Libertalia is no exception to that rule. Number 78 is a racing game that is a roll and move game. Oh my God, did he say roll and move? Yeah, I said roll and move. What are you going to do about it? Basically, what you'll be doing, you'll be setting up this course with different boys on this lake and you will be rolling dice and moving your power boats that number of spaces. But the number of dice you roll can only be changed before you roll them, right? So if you decide that you're falling behind, you want to roll four dice, you have to take four spaces and that might mean that you're going to overshoot or underrun the corners power boats looks crap don't know of anyone that actually has this game apart from me but it's one of our favorite racing games mainly because it is so simple and it's just another slant on that horrible roll and move and turns it into something that is actually very palatable Number 77 on this list is a game by Jamie Stigmeyer. It's Tapestry. It's a very loose civilization building game and it's exceptionally simple to get your head around. All you're going to be doing is you're going to be moving your piece up one of the four tracks and you'll be taking the action associated with that track. There's so much variety in this game. There's a billion types of tapestry cards that give you a special ability in each round. This is like Doctor Who's TARDIS. It looks really, really shallow on the outside, but when you open it up, it's labyrinthine on the inside. Tapestry, fantastic game by Jamie Stegmaier. That's our number 77. Number 76 on this list is a game by Ignacy Trevacek. It's Robinson Crusoe Adventures on the Cursed Island. This is a game that you will more often than not lose. I don't think we've ever beaten this one. Maybe we've beaten it once. I think we might have beaten it once. But what you'll be doing, you'll be landing on this desert island with nothing but your pants on. And you'll be foraging for food. You'll be trying to fend off different types of animals that are trying to eat your nuts. You'll have to build a shelter to protect you from the harsh winds on the island. And one of the nice mechanics of this is that you can defer the tragedy of some of the adventure cards right by shuffling them back into the deck and that means that they're going to come back at some point even worse than they were to start with this game can be a little bit frustrating because it is so bloody difficult but then that is part of the thing isn't it if you're expecting this to be easy then you might as well just sit on your couch and watch some other poor bastard do it on youtube number 75 is another dexterity game 
It's Catacombs. This tries to move a old school D&D RPG type stuff into a dexterity game, minus the story, if that makes sense. So you're going to set up this board, you're going to put a barrier around a board and you're going to be flicking these discs trying to kill monsters and progress through different levels of the dungeon there's all these types of weapons armor different special abilities different types of characters and a multitude of monsters loads of expansions this game is fucking huge and we love it it's catacombs our number 75 number 74 on this this is a game that came out of nowhere it was birthed by a minke whale in the atlantic ocean someone told me i don't know if that's true but it's quacks of quedlinburg this is a push your luck game where you're going to be loading your bag full of these ingredients and then you're going to be trying to draw these tokens out your bag to create these spells but if you draw a certain number of crap tiles then your bag will explode and you'll be covered in shit quacks of quedlinburg came out of nowhere and it's spawned two expansions you've just got a new expansion out for it. i think you've got the herb witches and a new one that i can't remember the name of because i've only seen it in german but we really do like this game i think this is going to go down as a classic because it's got the old school euro aesthetic from the late 90s early 2000s and it moves that type of thing forward into the modern age right quacks of quedlinburg number 74 73 on this list is probably some people's favorite game of all time this is pandemic whilst we like this game we don't really play it as much as we used to you know we probably played this to death this set the benchmark for cooperative games mainly because of that mechanic where you're going to be shuffling the city cards back into the deck and they're going to come out and spawn more viruses in cities where you're already trying to put fires out right so this game has surged in popularity over the last year obviously because of what's going on outside of my microcosm but yeah pandemic like we said it, it pushed the boat out insofar as cooperative games go would have been higher if we actually played it a bit more but there's better cooperative games out there now shock horror to a lot of people but there you go that's pandemic it's number 73 72 on this list is a game that now spans three core boxes and several mini boxes it's legends of andor this is a game that basically holds your hand all the way through you're going to be playing through this legend deck that will basically double up as a rule book you start off in the first adventure not knowing any of the rules and gradually over the course of the deck you will learn to play the game through this legend deck some people sort of equate this to a very loose adaptation of games like pandemic because it is cooperative if you're looking for something that's going to gobble up loads of your time and it has quite a bit of replayability in legend of Andor is a trilogy that you will want to dip your toe into. Number 71 on this list is a pirate themed game. It's a miniatures game by Call cool Mini or Not. It's Rum and Bones. Weren't really a big fan of the first edition of this, but when the second tile came out, it opened up a lot of doors and it fixed a lot of the problems with the original game. This is now one of our favourite skirmish games. Basically, what you're going to be doing, everyone's going to be selecting a faction and then you'll be choosing different characters out of that faction to represent you on the board. There's upgrades in this. You can upgrade all your characters to get better abilities. You're going to be flying across the ships via the rigging and there's also external threats like the kraken and different monsters to worry about rum and bones is essentially a two-player game you can play it with more but it is one of the best two-player miniatures games you can get there's so many characters in this one i mean like we've got two boxes full of miniatures and a stack of character cards that are thicker than my head so rum and bones yeah it's on number 71 so there you go, that wraps up our third instalment of our top 100 board games of all time. Are you bored yet? Is there any games that you think should have been higher that we haven't put on the list yet? Where do you think your favourite game is going to be on this list? That's how exciting this list is. Come back for part four, which is going to be our number 70 down to 61. Or you could just go and toss one off in the shower. So we'll see you next time.